I'm Darren Kofer. I'm a researcher at Collins Aerospace. My talk today is called Steal This Drone. It provides an overview of the High Assurance Cyber Military Systems Program. So you may recognize the talk title as a take on Abby Hoffman's book called Steal This Book, published in 1971. Hoffman was a 60s era counterculture activist and a member of the Chicago Seven. The book was intended as a guide for how to fight against the establishment and it included advice on uh, organizing protests, building bombs, setting up pirate radio stations, things like that. Just as all of life has moved online in the intervening 50 years, there's a sense in which cyber threats and cyber terrorists, whether individuals, groups, or nation states, are the modern day equivalent of the methods and audience of this book. So around 2010, um, people started becoming aware that cyber vulnerabilities are not isolated to traditional information processing platforms and infrastructure, but are also present in embedded systems, um, cars, airplanes, printers, um, and uh, including safety critical systems. Uh, so uh, uh, DARPA, at that time organized the HACMS program, High Assurance Cyber Military Systems, uh, with the goal of using formal methods to build systems that are resilient against cyber attack because they can be proven not to have typical security vulnerabilities. Uh, Collins led uh, one of the teams on the HACMS program uh, with our partners at uh, Galois, uh, the SEL4 development team, Boeing, and the University of Minnesota. So as a quick review, uh, formal methods are a way of providing complete exploration of a design using mathematical analysis. So um, it includes the use of formal methods, discrete math, and computer checked proofs, uh, techniques such as automated theorem proving, model checking. Uh, and the use of formal methods is uh, motivated by the idea that just as in other engineering disciplines, uh, doing appropriate mathematical analyses can contribute to establishing the correctness and robustness of the design. So it's really trying to make software engineering an actual engineering discipline uh, and can be applied to both safety and cybersecurity. And we can think of this as um, you know, the equivalent of doing uh, geometric proofs uh, like the Pythagorean theorem, where we want to know things not about it, just individual uh, triangles, or in this case, individual programs or uh, combinations of variables, mm -hmm. but a proof that um, something works for all inputs to the system. Um, one example of this uh, that's relevant for me, uh, living in the Minneapolis area, is the, uh, the, you may remember the collapse of the Mississippi River Bridge some years ago. Um, there was a case where the uh, structural design uh, that was, uh, uh, was designed by hand back in those days, of course, and there was uh, an error that eventually over time led to the collapse of the bridge. So the analogy here is that formal methods is the software as uh, the finite element analysis that we use today for ensuring that mechanical structures are sound and will serve their purpose. The approach we've used in, uh, that we used in the, the Hackham's program, which um, I should mention wrapped up in around 2017, uh, is architecture driven assurance. So we start with a uh, model of the system architecture and analyze it to ensure that it is correct. It does what we want it to do. It meets its requirements. This includes having a model using a language like uh, AADL, the architecture analysis and design language that can capture the properties, the structure, behavior, interactions of components. And then we use uh, formal analysis using assumed guarantee contracts to make sure that the components of the system interact to satisfy the system requirements. Next, we need to make sure that the components themselves are correct. Uh, that is that they satisfy their, their contracts um, and the contracts themselves are consistent and realizable. And we may use languages and tools like uh, the ivory tower language developed in the Hackham's program, Simulink design verifier, CDMC and the like. Uh, next, we want to show that the system does what the model says. Um, uh, that is that there are no other information flows uh, in the system. Uh, this includes properties like memory isolation um, and safety 
And uh, one way of doing that is to use the SEL4 formally verified secure kernel, which was a key part of uh, the work that we did in this program. Finally, once we're happy that the architecture, the components, and the, the hosting operating system are correct, uh, we automatically build the system implementation from the component and architecture models with proof of equivalence. Uh, I've mentioned SEL4. Uh, this was developed by um, uh, researchers uh, now at uh, UNSW in Sydney uh, and the, it, it, the SEL4 Foundation. SEL4 is the first formally verified high performance microkernel. Um, uh, it has a bi uh, the binary code has been approved to correctly implement the behavior of the system described in its abstract specification. And importantly, to do nothing else, there's no extra behaviors in the system and you, the formal proof gives us confidence in that. So this allows us to build systems that have security properties of integrity and confidentiality. SEL4 is open source and it's now supported by the SEL4 Foundation for ongoing development. Uh, and it allows us to implement a whole host of um, uh, bugs that can lead to serious security issues. Uh, Ivory Tower is a domain specific language that was developed by our partners at Galois. Uh, it's a, uh, it, uh, Ivory Tower is embedded in a high level language Haskell. And um, it, uh, the, the idea is to, uh, uh, provide a language that prevents users from making common errors that might be found in C. So they program in this very compact DSL and then generate safe C uh, from that. And it's a very efficient way to generate a lot of code from a relatively small uh, specification. And also automatically uh, generates uh, properties and tests that can be checked, um, arithmetic checks to prevent overflows and checks on interface values and types. So one of the um, demonstrations, uh, demonstration platforms that uh, um, talk about and we have here at the Aerospace Village uh, is the Smackham Copter Research Vehicle. As you can see, it's a small quadcopter and we've used this to demonstrate the effectiveness of the uh, formal methods tools that, we, um, that we're using for software development and uh, proof of correctness. Here's a peek inside of the, the quadcopter. Uh, starts out as the Iris Plus airframe, has a you know, traditional uh, RC controller radio that we use as a safety radio. Um, it comes with the PixHawk flight control computer inside. We've added to that a mission computer based on the um, uh, TK1 SOM uh, 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 computer and uh, those communicate over a CAN bus. Uh, there's also a little downward looking uh, camera on the, on the vehicle. And then it has a, um, a couple of other radios for communicating with its ground station. Uh, control and telemetry go over a, uh, an encrypted uh, uh, 3DR radio data link. And then video from the camera is streamed down on uh, just a standard Wi-Fi link. But to demonstrate the uh, effectiveness of some of the, the the technologies that we've been building. We've also um, uh, implemented uh, a bunch of uh, uh, different cyber attacks to, um, uh, to, 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 to try to break the system uh, behavior or uh, attempt to uh, cause it to do something that the, uh, that the operators uh, don't want it to do. So um, the, the idea here is that we exploit this uh, relatively unprotected Wi-Fi link that's just being used uh, to provide video from the camera as a way of gaining access to the vehicle and um, uh, connecting to the to the mission computer software. So here's a view of the demo that we did um, uh, at the end of the Hackham's program. You can see on the left a uh, group of good guys who are the operators of the vehicle. Um, the mission area representing some model small buildings that they're uh, attending to do surveillance of, and then the bad guys on the right who are trying to um, uh, uh, hack into the vehicle and uh, actually uh, be able to compromise it and physically capture the, the vehicle. Um, there's a diagram of what's going on in this attack. So this is showing you what the uh, before version of the system before we made our um, modifications to the to the software um, it's uh, just it 
here it's running an unverified kernel that has a, a, a memory um, vulnerability in it. And what that does is it allows the attackers to um, SSH into the Linux VM that's uh, being uh, hosted on the kernel. Uh, it's running the camera software. So I can just go in that, uh, that Wi-Fi link and um, break that and get access to the Linux VM and then exploit the, the memory error to find and change the encryption keys that um, are being used for the, for the telemetry link. Having done that, they uh, can uh, uh, prevent the, the legitimate ground station from being able to uh, control the vehicle and, um, and, and uh, operate it and even receive the video and telemetry from it and bring up their own uh, ground station using uh, the keys that they've written into the vehicle now and take control of the vehicle and physically capture it. So they haven't broken the encryption at all. They've just used this um, uh, deficiency in the in the vehicle to be able to find and overwrite the encryption keys themselves. So then after we re-engineered the vehicle, um, relying to a large extent on the SEL4 secure kernel, now that attack fails um, when the attackers try to gain access to any memory outside of the Linux VM. Uh, they're unsuccessful and um, in, in fact, they can do anything they like. They can uh, crash the camera software, crash the, the VM itself, and the vehicle is able to continue flying without any uh, impact on its um, uh, on the uh, control from the from the legitimate ground station. In fact, the the VM itself can be remotely restarted to regain control of the camera. Uh, so that's the the after version that shows the the vehicle being hardened against uh, those kinds of cyber attacks. Okay, but you may say that's just a toy. What about a real helicopter? Uh, so good question. Maybe something like this. This is uh, uh, Boeing's unmanned little bird helicopter uh, that we use as our second platform. You can see uh, up front where there might normally be um, uh, some room for passengers. There's a, a bunch of uh, computers that have been uh, that are used to, to allow this vehicle to fly autonomously. Uh, so this was our, um, uh, we, we take, our next step was to take all the technologies that we demonstrated on the, the quadcopter and apply them to the, to the little bird, the ULB. So here's a, a look at what the baseline architecture of the system looks like. You can see it's sort of equivalent um, to the, uh, the quadcopter in that on the left, you see there's a flight control computer and on the right, a, a mission computer that's interacting with uh, the, the ground station and managing uh, requests, uh, possibly from different ground stations. And those communicate uh, initially over a 1553 uh, data bus. There's also an onboard camera that's controlled um, uh, through, the, through the ground station and also can be used for certain guidance missions for the, uh, for the vehicle. Flight control software is just uh, monolithic, written in C, about 20,000 lines of code. The mission software is in C++, um, and it's about 87,000 lines of code. So uh, it, it's really quite amazing that we were able to do this on this program, because what we wanted to do was rebuild the software in this helicopter uh, using these new formal methods tools. Uh, and oh, by the way, uh, then we want to do some cyber attacks on it while it's flying. Um, and because of the confidence that we had in the results, uh, the, the, everyone on the team was, uh, was willing to go along with us. And we actually had some nice um, in-flight demonstrations of the, the vehicle uh, being resistant to, to cyber attacks. So here's what the final uh, ULB architecture looks like. As you can see, we've done a lot of similar things. We've got SEL4 running on the mission computer, added a, a verified file system for SEL4. Um, the authentication functions, the uh, ground station interoperability enforcement, some other functions are implemented in the ivory tower language. Uh, the camera software and the data recorder functions are now hosted in guest Linux VMs running on SEL4. Uh, the internal communication system has been simplified. The flight control computer software has been refactored and is now running on uh, the VxWorks RTOS. Uh, some of the flight control computer uh, flight control computer components are now implemented in Ivory Tower. We did an analysis of the ULB AADL model that was used to construct the system, 
And finally did uh, some uh, flight demos to, to show that it works and it was resistant to, to at least uh, some, some number of cyber attacks. Uh, this shows you what the baseline vehicle looked like. Uh, originally, everything on the mission computer was running on uh, Linux, all in one address space. We were able to demonstrate a kind of a, a sample uh, attack in which a, an infected uh, USB maintenance device is connected to a USB port on the helicopter to, uh, to, to download the data from the data logging process. Um, from there, the exploit goes and it uh, modifies the camera control software. And uh, dur that during uh, an actual flying mission, the camera um, can be disabled and that prevents the vehicle from uh, performing its mission. It essentially continually stows the camera and, and so it can't perform the, its camera-based guidance mission. Now in the hardened version, uh, again, uh, We've got SEL4 running on the mission computer um, and the, the separation that it provides between all of the software running natively on SEL4 and in these two uh, 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 VMs uh, running uh, Linux as a guest with the camera software and the data logging process. Uh, that allows the uh, attackers now to, to only be able to affect the data logging process uh, no longer can it uh, access uh, the camera or any other software running on the, the vehicle. So we're able to complete our, our mission without uh, interference. We've lost the data logging process, but all of the safety critical and mission critical functions are unaffected. There's some nice uh, videos uh, from the final demo of the system that are uh, available on our uh, website that, uh, that I show there, both of the quadcopter flying uh, and the, the ULB flight demo, uh, I'll also be showing those on a loop uh, down in the uh, aerospace village. So our next step then was to move to how do we do this more efficiently? And that brings us to the, the current um, DARPA Cyber Assured Systems Engineering Program. Um, and Collins is leading a team here with the SEL4 team, um, University of Kansas, Adventium, and Kansas State. Um, the idea uh, behind the program is that cybersecurity requirements are largely addressed today through processes aimed at risk mitigation and pen testing performed late in development. And this awesome also re uh, results often in uh, uh, expensive rework. So the goal of CASE is to develop uh, design analysis and verification tools that allow system engineers to design in cyber resiliency and manage trade-offs like they would do with other non-functional properties when designing uh, complex embedded computing systems. So you can think of this as how do we provide tools to automate much of the work that we did by hand uh, in the HACMS program. Uh, so the, the, <clears throat> the tool suite that we've developed uh, for this program is called Briefcase. Um, and what it is is an integrated model-based system engineering tool suite based again on AADL. The idea is to help users to be able to transform their system uh, design models to satisfy cyber resiliency requirements and provide as much automation as possible in doing that. Uh, we generate new high assurance components from formal specifications. We verify the system design using formal methods and um, generate and document the evidence produced and compliance with requirements by means of an assurance case that's being built up in the, in the background by the tool. And then finally, we generate this, all the software integration code directly from verified architecture models uh, targeting multiple operating systems and kernels, including SEL4. Um, we've chosen AADL for our architecture language here because it's sufficiently rigorous um, and it provides the semantics that we need to support analysis. It's at the right level of abstraction um, uh, being targeted at uh, distributed real-time embedded systems and uh, it supports construction. You can actually generate code from an AADL model. And the OSATE open source uh, uh, AADL tool environment uh, supports addition of new capabilities like, the, like we developed in the case program. So here's a quick use case that more or less corresponds to some of the things that we did in Hackums, a cyber retrofit, where we're trying to deal with at least some uh, legacy code. We're not always, uh, and in fact, almost never uh, starting from scratch when designing systems. Um, so the process that the tool helps you, can help you go through in this case is uh, virtualizing the legacy system, hosting it on SEL4, 
uh, extracting and hardening uh, specific critical components, uh, possibly filtering the inputs to make sure that no um, malformed uh, inputs are uh, sent into the, uh, the the legacy software to you know try to uh, uh, cause harm, and then monitoring the outputs to make sure that everything is performing correctly and intervening if uh, if necessary. Um, so uh, you see at the bottom left here, a very simple AADL model of a, of a UAV. Uh, after applying the tools and transforms from the, uh, the case, uh, the briefcase tools, um, we've inserted a bunch of new components. Most of this is done uh, automatically under user guidance, and we're automatically collecting verification evidence in the in the background. Uh, we have also some. Uh, uh, demos of the briefcase, briefcase tools in action on our website. The first video kind of walks through the use of the, the briefcase tool environment, um, addressing multiple cyber resiliency requirements for a UAV uh, mission computing system. Uh, and then there's another demo sort of showing these same um, before and after um, uh, effects of, uh, of uh, hardening the system using the tools. Here's a Here's an attack that works on the baseline system, and now you can see it's defeated on the, the Hartman system that we built. Uh, just like in uh, Hackums, we're moving uh, in the final phase of the program to a, uh, a real military system. We're applying these tools to the Collins Common Avionics Architecture System, or CAS, which is employed in um, a number of uh, military vehicles, including the, the Army CH-47, the Chinook helicopter. Um, and uh, that work is, is ongoing right now. We have a, a hacking activity set up in Aerospace Village that you can um, uh, take advantage of to get some hands-on experience with uh, some of the stuff that we did in the Hackens program. Uh, we've got the quadcopter there, uh, just like I showed in the, 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 the demo system earlier. Um, we'll have um, uh, the ability for you to log in to the, uh, the Linux VM, which is hosted on uh, SEL4 uh, with root access. It's running on the quadcopter mission computer. Um, and uh, just as I described, the encryption keys for the, uh, the telemetry link are stored in a separate SEL4 component. Um, so having logged in, you're in the, you have access to the VM. The goal is to see, you know, if you can, can you see, read or write these, uh, these keys? First of all, um, we'll have some uh, pre-stage attacks or you can bring your own attacks to run on the Linux software and observe the effects on the quadcopter operation um, and determine whether, you know, crashing the camera software or crashing the entire Linux VM will impact the, the telemetry, it's not supposed to. Uh, and then finally, um, the, the main goal is to see if you can bypass the SEL4 separation to read or write the encryption keys or, or possibly do worse, somehow affect the, the operation of the, the vehicle like we, we showed in the, in the demonstration. Sadly, we're not flying the quadcopter. This is all a bench demo, um, but uh, still it's a, it's, a, it's a real system and uh, pretty neat to see uh, in operation. Uh, so wrapping up in the DARPA Hackums and CASE programs, we've developed a suite of model-based system engineering tools for cyber resiliency. These tools use formal methods to automatically transform architecture models and prove that the system is correct with respect to cybersecurity, safety, and functional requirements. System implementation can be automatically generated from verified models um, targeting uh, Linux or the formally verified SEL4 secure kernel. And importantly, we've applied the tools to real systems, real aircraft, to show that they're both practical and effective. There's the links again to the, um, the code, papers, videos uh, on the website for both uh, the Hackums and the, the CASE project. Thanks for listening today.